Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. So, back in like July, I asked for questions for a Q&A video and then I never answered those questions. So I'm here now to finally record this Q&A video. I actually did record this once before and then it turned out really, really crappy because I was rushing a lot. It was right before I was leaving for California for VidCon. So I always meant to re-record it and I never did. So this is me re-recording that. So I'm just going to run through these questions. I kind of moved them around a little bit so that way some similar questions would be near each other, but they aren't necessarily categorized into anything specific because there aren't that many questions. Also, I apologize now if I mispronounce anyone's names while I'm going through this. So the first question is from Esmeralda Del Rio and she asked, what did you major in in college? And I was a journalism major in college. And then Eternal Sunshine asked, what do you work as and how do you fit in time to read when life becomes hectic? So I work at a consulting firm and I do writing and editing for the company so we send out these massive reports to our clients and so my job is to talk to the clients, write up some of the report, put the report together, all the different pieces. It turns out to be anywhere from like 80 to 100 pages and I have to read through the whole thing. I'm one of these set of eyes that edits it before it goes out to the client to make sure there's no major mistakes in it. In terms of fitting in time to read when life becomes hectic, I don't always do it. One example is that currently my life is extremely hectic. Like December is by far my busiest month of the year consistently. I just don't read and I'm kind of okay with that. I'm not someone who feels like you have to read all the time. I don't feel that bad about not reading as much. I will say that one thing that I do try to do is like make screen off time. I have a hard time falling asleep sometimes and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm constantly on my computer and constantly on my phone or my tablet. So I try to shut down my computer and stop using my phone around like 9 p.m. to give my brain time to unwind and then once I do that I'll usually pick up a book and read for like an hour or so before bed. T. Mitchum 81 that asks, are you a professional full-time booktuber or is this part-time? If this is part-time, how do you juggle both work and YouTube? Definitely not full-time. A big thing for me is that I schedule a lot. You may have seen my bullet journaling video, my Google Calendar video just went up, so I have a plan for my days, weeks, and months. So I generally schedule out my videos in advance, so I always have an idea of what video I'm going to be putting up every week. And then I do the majority of my recording and editing on the weekends when I can. Sometimes I do record during the week. I'll try to either edit that weekend or I'll edit it in some other point in the night. And then the other thing is that, I mean, I'm busy during the weeks, but if I am coming home straight from work, I'm home by like 5.30. I have like four or five hours before I'm in bed. That's a lot of time. One thing that I've made a habit recently is that I don't watch more than one episode of TV a night unless it is the weekend or a Friday. That has definitely helped with my productivity immensely just not be sitting on the couch watching TV all night long definitely helps get things done. It's one of those things where if you're willing to do it you make the time for it and this is something that I love doing so I make the time for it. Another question that they asked is are there any moral or ethical lessons that you discovered from great fiction or nonfiction that you apply to your personal life? This question immediately made me think of The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Here, this book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. The reason why it made me think of this book is because this book has a lot to deal with like medical ethics, which I don't work in the medical field so I don't deal with medical ethics very often, but it definitely made me think a lot about the way that we treat people and the way that we say things are okay for the sake of science. If you haven't read this book, I highly, highly recommend it. It's really fantastic um, and really gripping and you learn a lot about how horrible doctors were to colored people and how they treated them as like not human beings. So yeah, that was definitely one book that really made me think about ethical lines and what people do and don't have the right to do. Just gonna stick it on top because I don't feel like dealing with that. But the way that it applies to my personal life is just seeing how people treat other people and how even though I have an end goal in mind, there are other people who are usually, I don't want to say in the way, but are required in between you and that goal and you have to treat those people as human beings and not just a means to an end, if that makes sense. Let's Read asks, what is a vlogging challenge you have overcome, like shooting, schedules, how did you overcome it? In terms of like a technical thing, two big things I had to figure out were lighting and color correcting. Lighting is something that I've always had an issue with when it's the winter time like it is currently. I finally feel like I'm starting to figure that out like now just by getting a lamp and playing with the light and putting it at different angles and trying to make sure that there isn't like a glare in my glasses even though they're 
is clearly sometimes. And then the other thing is color correcting. That's something I didn't learn until I got Final Cut Pro. I started to play around with color correcting a little bit in iMovie, but obviously that program is a lot more limited in terms of what you can be doing. Once I learned color correcting, it made such a huge difference in my videos, and I feel like they look so much better than they have in the past. Especially looking at like my first year of videos, man, they are real yellow. So... <laughs> Being able to just fix those types of things and making videos look better than they might if you just look at the raw footage. And I taught myself how to cut a little correct just by looking up tutorials on YouTube. Books are my social life asks, do you consider yourself a feminist? Why or why not? Yes, I do. A feminist is someone who believes men and women should be equal, and I do. Yeah, not much more to it than that. Jenny from Adultish Books. Hi, Jenny. Asks, what's your favorite kind of pizza if you like pizza? Honestly, I don't want to be friends with someone who doesn't like pizza. I'm only half kidding when I say that. My favorite kind of pizza is a thin crust pizza, which is kind of sacrilegious living in Chicago saying that. I love my deep dish, but on the regular, I love getting thin crust pizza with sausage and jalapenos. Maybe green peppers, too. Conrad from Just a Dust Jacket. Hi, Conrad. As lots of books throughout history have been banned, not so much your thoughts on those books, but how do you feel about books being banned or book censorship? Do you think it would ever be something you could support? I'm not for book censorship whatsoever, and I can't ever see it being something that I support. Most of the time when books are being banned, I feel like the parents haven't actually read the books that are being banned. And even if there is, like, controversial material in the book, one, I would like to hope that if I ever become a parent, obviously I'm speaking as someone who isn't a parent, but I would like to hope that those things would prompt a conversation between me and my child as opposed to me just flat out banning things. The second thing is that I would like to hope that the teacher is intelligent enough to be able to discuss those difficult topics in a way and that, you know, we're not just ignoring the difficult things in the world, that that actually becomes the discussion point. And three is that if I really have an issue with the book that's being presented, I would never want to ban the book from being taught because I would like to think that there's a reason it's being taught and I just might choose to have my child out, opt out of it. I don't think I really or any parent should have the right to really make decisions like that on the behalf of another child. Like, like if I have an issue with a book for my kid, I can't say that it's going to be a problem for someone else's kid, if that makes sense. Like, I completely understand why parents would want to not have their kids read something. Obviously, there's good reasons behind that, but I think saying that no kid should ever read it it's a little bit of a gray line for me. Max from All Done Books. Hi Max. I don't know why all of my friends are in a row, but that's happening. My question for your Q&A is what is one of your fondest bookish memories? It can be anything from a pleasant reading experience or a funny moment in a bookstore or whatever comes to mind. I mean, I feel like I go book shopping with my friends a lot and those are always a lot of fun, mostly just because most of my friends like to read, but they don't read as much as I do. So a lot of times book shopping with my friends is fun because I'm just like throwing books at them, being like, read this book, it's awesome, read this book, it's awesome. But one of my fondest is that my two friends and I went to this book sale that was happening and it was basically like a box sale so I think it was like 15 or 20 dollars for like a big cardboard box um and you could just fill it with as many books as you wanted for that set price and so we went in saying that we were going to split like two boxes and we left there with two boxes each <laughs> so <laughs> that was a lot of fun I might actually have a book haul from that experience on my channel because it happened while I was a booktuber so if I can find that I'll link to it and you guys can see all of those crazy books that I bought but that was a lot of fun. So Sheila from Oh Hey Sush, you're on a desert island and can only have one book with you, what is it? The easy answer and the most direct answer I could say is the Bible because then maybe I would finally read through that entire thing. If I can't bring that, I would want to bring like my complete Sherlock Holmes bind up which I have up there, you guys can see it. If that's considered cheating, then I would probably want... what's a really long book? Maybe I could bring War and Peace with me and reread that just over and over again. Roberta Prando? So sorry. Asks, what's the best thing about living in Chicago? So much. I love Chicago so much. I love the skyline. The architecture is amazing. Chicago is known for its architecture. I think it's the best skyline in the United States for sure. The food is great. If you come to Chicago, you can easily gain five to ten pounds in like a week because the food is amazing. We have lots of great book stores here in Chicago too, which I realized recently is not a thing that a lot of major cities can say. We have like Barnes and Noble and Half Price Books as well as our little indies and things like that and it's just such a great abundance. I like that 
it's a major city without it feeling too big, at least to me. Maybe it's just because I grew up in Chicago, but I feel like New York is too much and like LA is too much, but Chicago feels just right. I like that Chicago gets every season, even though the seasons can get really extreme here with our blizzards and our negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which happened last winter. And we've had summers where it goes over 100. So we get it all and I kind of like that. But I also like the fact that we don't have hurricanes. Also, Swiss Army Knife Recommendations, books you'd recommend to anyone and everyone. Some basic ones are like The Martian, Ready Player One, Station Eleven, Tana French if they're willing to pick up a mystery. Jupe Lahiri is a book. Um, I recommend Jupe Lahiri a lot and Khaled Hosseini a lot. You know, I feel like those are all kind of good Swiss Army recommendations, but those are also really popular books, but they're popular for a reason. And then her final question is, what was the book that challenged you the most? Could be because of the length or depth or the vocabulary, anything that made you feel really challenged doing it. Definitely Warren. No question about that. Definitely the hardest book that I've ever read. I'm sure if I read something like Ulysses or something, I would probably have that for an answer, but definitely War and Peace. River Skeen asks, what are your favorite YouTubers who are not booktubers? That's a great question. I really love Akila. Akila Hughes from Smoothie Freak, I think is her username. I really like MKBHD, who's a tech YouTuber. He does really great stuff. I really like uh, Dodger from Press Art to Continue or Dexterity Bonus. She is a gamer YouTuber. I've been really getting into finance YouTubers recently as I'm going on my own debt-free journey. And so two that I really like are Gazelle Intense and Budget Girl. Gazelle Intense is a couple and then Budget Girl is just a girl, but all of them just seem really, really sweet and great. And they're very like open and honest about their financial situation and the things that they're doing. And watching their videos really helps motivate me. So I highly recommend them if you're looking for financial YouTubers. I really like Lex from Tyrannosaurus Lex. And for makeup stuff, I really like Ishani from Total Makeup Junkie 101, mostly because she's brown and her skin tone is relatively close to my own skin tone. So I feel like her makeup reviews are the ones that come closest to what I would actually use or what I have actually used her reviews before to buy products because I can see what it would actually look like on my skin. Okay, and then for the final set of questions from Rebecca Johnson, she has two. Her second question is, what's your favorite poem? And I'm just going to go out there and say I don't have a favorite poem. I don't read much poetry. The best thing I probably read was Citizen earlier this year, and that's the only answer that I have for that. And then her other question was, if you were a teacher of really young kids, like kindergarten or first grade, what book would you teach them to get them interested in reading? This is really hard for me to answer because I don't read a lot of kids literature, children's literature, so I feel like I would revert back to whatever I was interested in as that age, which would be like Berenstain Bears, Amelia Bedelia. I was gonna say Wayside School, but that might be too old even for that age too. But I think a big thing for that, but I feel like a big thing would just be to read a variety of books to them because kids cling on to different things. And as you know, people like different types of books. So you never know which book is going to be the one to hook them. So I don't know if I have like a single answer for them. I might read Shel Silverstein. Oh, Shel Silverstein is a poet. Maybe he could count for the other answer too. Um, I really liked Shel Silverstein when I was a kid, so that might work as well. So yeah, those are all of the questions and therefore all of the answers. I again apologize that this took so long to put together. I'm just the worst YouTuber. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.